for an initial permanency hearing. Is the mother, Casey Hearn, present? No, she's not, Judge. Casey Hearn, Casey Hearn. All right, thank you. And what about Vance Dever, the father, Vance Dever? Vance Dever. Vance Dever. Is he still incarcerated? Yes, he is. Okay, thank you. So let me let me get my paperwork right. Um, Ms. Lindsay, you you represent the mother or are you the mother's uh, guardian? I'm her guardian at Lightham Judge. Okay, remind me who represents her. I believe Ms. Truesdale does. I don't know why I don't have that here. Yes, does. Ms. Truesdale represents her, okay. her at Lightham. Okay. Very, very good. Do we have um, Ms. Trousdale? No, sir, Judge. She must have forgot about that one because she said she had curfew and she'll be back before one, but let me go ahead and text her. Okay, let's see if we can get her on Dever. Very good. Thank you. And Ms. Holliday, are you ready for Mr. Downing on the Dever matter? Yes, Judge. All right, thank you. Okay, and I believe we have Ms. Trousdale. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Ms. Trousdale. Are you ready on uh, Dever, uh, Casey Hearn? Yes, yes, sir. Right, and my I did call for her, and as you know, she's not, uh, I don't yes, think sir. she's here. She's not present otherwise. Uh, all right, so again, okay, let me get everyone who may testify. If you'll raise your right hand to be sworn, please. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Hip, whenever you're ready. Caseworker, state your name, please. Uh, Lisa Francis Siebert. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, you're here for your caseworker, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, where are, how many kids are we talking about here? One child. And where is that child placed? He's currently placed in a foster home, um, but he's been at since the beginning of the case. Okay. Uh, basic level? Yes. Okay. And he doing okay? Um, yes, he's doing very well in the home. Um, he does participate in um, some developmental uh, therapies, um, but is doing very well in the home. Okay. And uh, so he didn't have any special needs? Um, other than he is um, severely developmentally delayed, um, severely being about approximately three months. So he does require like occupational, physical, um, also feeding therapies um, through ECI. Um, and this is just due to the circumstances of how he came into care. Okay. And, uh, what about, uh, the parents or any parents involved? Um, well, unfortunately, um, the mother in the case is not able to be involved due to her medical issues. Um, the father in the case is incarcerated. Um, so he also is unable to participate in services. Okay. Then where is the case headed? So the current goal is unrelated adoption with a concurrent goal of relative adoption. Um, I know that there have been a lot of CFE efforts and I know that between CASA and my worker, there have been contact with family members that have been um, either unable or um, kind of want to see him stay where he is currently, if that's possible. Okay. Is this foster home where he is uh, an adoptive home? Is yeah, they're duly licensed, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Pest Witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Trousdale. Um, have you been in contact with um, or identified family members other than the parents? Um, so I know my worker has been in contact. Um, we did do a home study on a maternal grandmother and step-grandfather. Um, that they actually self-selected to be um, out of. And then we have had contact, uh, we being, again, worker in CASA. There's a cousin in Utah, uh, I believe, that is currently present in the hearing, um, who uh, would like to be considered as a backup in the event that the foster parent is unable to adopt or be a permanent placement. Um, but at present, they don't want to disturb anything of that nature. I understand that a paternal aunt had been contacted and also unable to be considered as placement through their own self-selection. Okay, so um, at this time you've identified family, um, a few or at least one who is 
willing and able to step up if the current placement doesn't work out, correct? There's there's no family at this time, to the best of your knowledge, asking for the child to be placed with them. Um, that's my understanding so far. Um, I could always okay. be corrected if, if there's more of an update. Um, unfortunately, I don't have as much of a direct contact with um, clients as my worker does. So um, that's my present understanding. Okay. And do you know Ms. Hearn's current state? What her the most recent uh, update is on her? Um, the most recent update I got from my worker is that she continues to be in hospice and um, not doing very well. Okay. okay, thank you, Pastor Witness. All right, thank you, Mr. Gott. I don't have any questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Holliday. Thank you. Um, how's the child doing in their present uh, placement? Um, he's doing um, fairly well considering um, his delays. Um, he's obviously developed a very strong bond with the current placement considering he's been there all, all of his little life. So um, I think all of his needs are being very well met and he is in a nurturing home. Are there other children in that home as well? Uh, unfortunately, I do not know that information. Okay. Um. Has the department had any contact with mother or father regarding services? Um, I do believe my worker has had contact with the father in jail. Um, and again, just with the jail circumstances, there's not a possibility for him to interact with services. And then um, I don't know about his contact with the mother um, as she is in hospice. I don't know that she is even able to speak. That's the witness. All right, thank you. Back to you, Mr. Hip. Pastor, state your name, please. Joe Lynn Reynolds. Ms. Reynolds, uh, tell the court how the child's currently doing. Uh, the child is developmentally delayed, but has made major strides since coming into foster care. Uh, the foster mother has approached um, East early childhood intervention and has kept on until they have got all the services he needs. She keeps up with all his appointments. He does have um, the, he's been dental. The feeding one is new because he's having trouble, some issues uh, with texture. But the last we heard, he was at 14 pounds and he is a tempting to crawl but they're going to work more on that as he's having trouble putting his hands flat but foster mother's taking excellent care she's getting his to all his appointments there is another child in the home who is about two months i'm thinking and um but the foster mother handles them both excellently great now how old is this child he is, will be seven months on the ninth. Okay. And so if he were here in this room with me right now, what would I notice about him in terms of his uh, delay? In terms of his delay, I mean, you're not, it wouldn't be instantly, but as you held him, you could tell his muscles are real tight. Um, the biggest thing you're going to notice about him, he's happy very vocal um it's just okay. little subtle things that you see that are need to be corrected to your knowledge has he been diagnosed with any form of cerebral palsy no he has not okay he, his muscles are very toned very hypertoned they're um they're very tight very uh, the therapist is working on loosening them some. He used to could, um, he could get them tight and flip. Once the therapist started working with him and loosened them up, he had to learn to flip over again. So, I mean, when you hold him, you can feel the tightness in his body. Can he sit up? No, he, the foster mom called the other day and said he sat up for 30 seconds, which is a delay. Uh, he should be sitting up more than that. Okay. And obviously he can't stand. 
he can with you holding him. Okay. When he's when you hold him up and he's standing, are, are his feet at a 90 degree angle to his legs? Not exactly. He kind of holds his heels up a little bit, but that is getting better with his therapy sessions. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll pass All right. Thank you, Ms. Trousdale. Um, have you had any discussions with um, Miss Meese, the maternal grandmother, regarding yes, I have. her? I talked to okay. her Tuesday. Okay. And without saying anything she said, um, is there any recommendation by CASA for this child to be placed with her? No. Okay. Is there any recommendation that she, well, like that? Has she had any visits or any time with this child at all since this case started? No, they have not. Okay. I have sent the grandmother a couple of pictures. Okay. Okay. Has she shown interest in the child and not necessarily placement, but being involved or being able to provide yes. any support? Or that? Okay. Yes, she has. And she asked me if I would send pictures every so often just so she can keep up with its progress. Okay. okay. Um, and have, have you had an opportunity to visit mom or spoken with Miss Meese about mom's current condition? Um, when we talked Tuesday, I just barely touched on it. I asked her how she was doing, and she kind of teared up, not good, and we just went on to the next subject. Okay. Is it your understanding mom's condition is declining? Yes. Her health continues to decline. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gott. No questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Holliday. <clears throat> Thank you. Have you observed the child at the foster placement? Yes, I have. And has uh, the foster parent's interaction with the child been safe and appropriate? Yes, it has been. Do you have any concerns or anything that you'd like to tell the court about the placement? No, she's an excellent placement and he's in really good care. Was the home safe and clean? Yes. No further questions. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Hip. Uh, no further witnesses. Okay. Thank yes. you. And go ahead, Mr. Hip. Judge, I, have, I apologize. I forgot to ask her a couple questions. Okay, um, go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Uh, Ms. Reynolds, has any other family reached out to CASA um, requesting that this child be placed with them? Just to my knowledge was the one where she said if the current placement didn't, if it fell through, she would think about taking the child. Okay. Has CASA located any family that um, you believe should be considered for placement? In my honest opinion, no. Okay. Have you found any family... Well, and you say in your opinion, you don't believe any family you found would be appropriate or you haven't found any family? There was the one, um, but they weren't like going to come and ask to take him. They preferred he stayed at the foster home where he was and is well bonded and growing and thriving. Okay. Okay. So you, you haven't found any other family besides that? No. Besides those individuals in Utah. Okay. And, that, and those family members you're talking about, is, is that the family members in Utah? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Judge Passo. All right, thank you. Any other questions of CASA? Any other witnesses, anyone? Okay. Oh, All right. Judge. Yes. Sorry, I'm a cousin in Utah. Am I allowed to speak in this? Who, who are you? Um, the cousin in Utah. The, are, are you the, the cousin in Utah? Yes. Okay. Have you been sworn in? Yes. Okay. Let's see if anyone wants to call you as a witness. Sure, I will. Um, okay. Tell your name, please. Jordan Nawatu. And how are you related to the child? Um, uh, the man that's incarcerated is my uncle, my mom's brother. Okay. 
And you, are you or are you not a potential placement for the child? Um, I am. I just wanted to clear that up a little bit. Uh, it's not that I don't have any interest. I just wanted to do what was best for the child. And if anybody felt like it was disruptive for me to take him, I didn't want to do that. But um, I also am very willing to give him a loving home and I want him to be in the best place for him. Okay. Well, I am absolutely certain the notes are being furiously taken about that now. Um, does everybody have your contact information? Everybody from yeah. CPS and, and CASA? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass with this. And, and that included everyone from CPS? Yes. Um, I have talked to Caleb at CPS, and I just talked to Liza this morning at CPS. Okay. She texted very me good. about the Zoom hearing. Okay. Very, very good. And she's acknowledging that. All right. Thank you uh, very much. And did you hear Mr. Hip's line of questioning about the special needs of the child? Um, yes, I did. I have two other children. One is already special needs. Okay, so I think he was on to something there. So I just wanted to make sure you heard that. Um, okay, any so thank you very, very much um, um, uh, for being here uh, today. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All right, thank you. So any anything else from anyone else? All right, uh, Mr. Hip, Judge, any, was... go ahead, Ms. Trousdale. Is Ms. Lindsay present? Yeah, oh, yes, she is. Mm -hmm. Judge, I'll just ask that she be able to have a, a quick update um, with regards to our client's condition. Just take her probably one, a minute if she could just testify in the narrative. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, I have discussed Casey's uh, current condition with her nurses and the director of nurses there. She actually is doing fairly well. Um, she's improved a lot. She's gained over 20 pounds. Um, her wound that was fairly open that they couldn't do any surgery on has um, almost completely closed. Uh, she is eating fine. She moves around pretty good. Uh, she actually goes out to kind of like an adult daycare facility on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Um, it kind of caused me pause because when I spoke to her mother um, before speaking to the nurses, her mom had a totally different kind of um story to tell um and she, it's that's not the case she is she is getting better um she's not fully okay but she is still on hospice currently um they are going to reevaluate that but at this point she doesn't have anywhere else to go and she still is kind of under the care of a doctor um but she is she is improving at this point they don't know if you know it could take a turn but at this point she has been doing a lot better than when I initially saw her back in February. So, okay, Ms. So Lindsay, it, it, uh, yes. I'm sorry, Judge. No, no, go ahead, Ms. Trussell. Ms. Lindsay, um, that update is is quite different than the update that we received April 18th from Ms. Meese, correct? That is definitely that that is true. Yes. Okay. And and as of April 18th, um, it was your understanding she wasn't doing well and and was not expected to make it much longer, is that correct? That was true. She told me okay. that um, when I followed up with her about Casey, she said that she wasn't doing well, um, her kidneys were failing, and that her heart rate was very faint, and she didn't think she was going to make it through the weekend. Um, but when I spoke to the nurses, that has never been the case. Um, so I'm not sure where Miss Meese is getting her information from or why she is relaying that information to, to anyone. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Judge, I just wanted to clarify that. that Absolutely. Um, so, Ms. Lindsay, um, do you know how often Ms. Meese sees Ms. Hearn in person? Well, she actually, the, the day that I had a conference with the nurses, she actually had Casey with her out. So she takes her out for a couple hours a day. I'm assuming right now it's just kind of once a week, but they don't have any restriction on um, her being able to leave with Ms. Meese. But she actually you know picks her up takes her to her house spends time with her and brings her back so okay. as of when i spoke to them i want to say two about two days ago judge she was actually out with her at that time and then and then brought her back okay so is it fair to say that it's kind of palliative care and not just straight up hospice it is judge at this point it is when she initially came it was hospice because she she 
all the hospitals they tried to transfer to denied her care. And so they were just putting her there to kind of keep her comfortable. But now they've, they've been doing a great job at getting her um, her health, you know, kind of back up to the good condition. So wow. they're going to reevaluate it eventually. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, thank you for um, very much for that update. Um, Ms. Let me see. Um, Ms. Nawatu, uh, are you still there? Yes, Your Honor, I'm still here. Okay, thank you. Have you met, do you know the mother, Casey Hearn? No, I haven't, and I, I'm with everybody else. I, I thought she was declining rapidly. Okay. All right. And so again, Mr. Dever, Vance Dever, the father, yes. he's your, your uncle. Yes. Is, is that right? Okay, all right. Okay. Again, thank you very much. Any thank you. Emails from anyone else? Okay. The department has continued as the uh, temporary managing conservator. Uh, the current placement is approved to continue. The court makes all the requisite findings uh, related to the placement of the child. Now, Mr. Hip, um, if um, uh, there is a request uh, for an ICPC uh, at some point on Ms. Uh, Nawuta or anyone else, and um, it might uh, very well behoove us to do it expedited. If that does work out, then just let me know, and, and I will do sign whatever I need to. Uh, can so, can uh, Ms. Adams jump in? Yes, please. Ms. Adams, go ahead. Your Honor, we're unable to serve the mom in the current condition that she is in. Can we have the authority to serve the guardian of litem in her steed? Yes. Stead? In, yes. in, in place of her? Yes. Okay. And Miss Lindsay, would you um, accept that service? Yes, that's fine. Awesome. Would you like us to personally serve you or can we email no, you? No, you can email okay. me. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, very, very good. Okay, so I think uh, there are no parents present to admonish. Um, so I think the only thing I have left is just to give you all the future dates. And you may know them already, but uh, our next hearing is for permanency before final order. That is set for August the 2nd at 9 a.m. Final trial is set for November the 1st at 1.30. Our dismissal date is December the 2nd and December the 2nd. Uh, 2024. For so, I thank uh, all of you for your uh, very good and hard work uh, and thorough work on this case. Um, I believe we will be requesting an expedited ICPC. Okay, so I will sign that as soon as I see it. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. In the interest of CP for a permanency review before final order. We have uh, Ms. Iverson, Ms. Holiday, and Ms. Tanner. Um, do we still have Ms. Tanner or is she in a breakout room? So, Ms. Tanner, are you ready? I am. Okay, very um, good. Uh, let me let me back up. Put your hands down for just a second. My apologies. Let me call for the mother, Ashley Bertrand. Ashley Bertrand, Ashley Bertrand. Uh, what about Casey Parker? Mother Casey Parker, Casey Parker, Casey Parker. No answer. If you all are um, on the phone, press star six, unmute, announce your appearance. Otherwise, unmute your device. Ashley Bertrand, Casey Parker. All right, no answer. Nobody's presently in the waiting room. Now, hands back up again, please. Thank you all so much. Yes. Yeah. All right, do you yes. swear? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I heard from somebody say something on 317. Is that Ashley Bertrand or Casey Parker? Um, Judge, that's me. That's Tracy Martin. I'm the oh, call okay. coordinator. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, Mr. Hip, you may call your first. Uh, caseworker, state your name, please. Giovanni Franklin. Okay. Um, I remember this case very well. Where are the parents? They have not been in contact with the department since March. Okay. And so they're not still visiting this child? No, visits were actually suspended February the 26th. Okay, and so you haven't been getting any drug tests or any uh, cooperation with services or anything? No, sir. 
Okay. Where's the child placed? He is currently placed in a, a home with his aunt. Great aunt, I'm sorry. And how's he doing? He is doing great and has probably traveled more than most adults in his nine months of being here. <laughs> okay. Um, and what's the what's the goal at this point? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. Relative um, 50 kin adoption and relative 50 kin conservatorship. Okay. And does he have that kind of relationship with the uh, relative? Absolutely. Okay. They get along great. Yes. Perfect. That's the way it is. All right. Thank you, Ms. Iverson. No questions, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Holiday. No questions. Thank you, Ms. Tanner. Uh, yes, Ms. Franklin, do you have any concerns for the child if he were to be returned home to the parents today? Yes. Okay, and what would those concerns be? No stable housing. Um, the parents move from place to place. Um, no contact. And also, they're unconfirmed whether or not they're still using and have drug use. Okay. Would you can would you characterize these parents as compliant or non-compliant with their services? Non-compliant since the beginning of the case. Okay. Would it be fair to say that they haven't done any services? Correct. Not even court ordered services. Okay. And do you think that it's in the child's best interest to remain in this placement? Yes. Okay. And do you think that his great aunt? is capable and willing to do anything and everything to protect this child and to raise him as he should be. Yes. Okay. And do you have any concerns about the current placement of the child? None at all. Okay. Are there any physical, mental, or emotional needs the child has that are not, that are not being addressed by placement? No, you can throw it away. I don't even know. No. Okay. And so do you believe that it's in the child's best interest to remain in this placement? Yes. Okay. And do you believe that the current goals, as they've been stated, which are relative adoption and relative conservatorship, are in the child's best interest? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass witness. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Franklin, do you know uh, whether someone from the department has had uh, the adoption versus uh, PCA PMC conversation? Yes, we have. Um, the Placement is currently in the process of being licensed. And so both of those conversations have taken place with her, myself, and her kinship worker, but anything she is willing and wanting to do in order to keep him. Wonderful. Now, how how close, if you know, are we from uh, licensure? She has completed everything she's needed to do. We're just waiting on their home study. Okay, very good. Well, tell him I said to hurry up, please. <laughs> okay, we'll do. All right, thank you. Back to you, Mr. Hip. Any other questions or witnesses? Yeah, Casa. Casa. All right. State your name, please. I'm Jenny Murph. And how's this child doing? He's doing so good. I visited the placement last week, and he is just a happy little fella. He was smiling the whole time. <clears throat> And needless to say, I guess he's bonded with the caregiver. Oh, yes. Yes. They you were think, very close. You think this is a great placement for him? I do. Perfect. Um, had any contact with the, either of the parents? No. Tracy, my coordinator, and I called mom last week and left a message with the only number that we have. But to my knowledge, there was no return call. Thank you, Pastor Witness. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Iverson. No questions, Jana. Okay, thank you, Ms. Holiday. No questions. Okay, thank you, Ms. Tanner. Okay, uh, yes, ma'am. Do you believe it's in the child's best interest to remain in the placement? Yes. And do you be? Do you think it'd be detrimental to the child for him to be placed back with the parents? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Hip. Nothing further. 
All right, thank you. Any uh, Anything further from anyone else? Any other witnesses? If the placement is present, Your Honor, I'd like to call her. Okay, is that um, Ms. Ms. Goins? Yes, sir, that's me. You were, you were sworn, yes? Yes, sir, I was. Okay, thank you. You may proceed. Okay, and could you please state your relationship to the child? I'm his great aunt. Okay, and you've provided placement for this child pretty much the entire case, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, I've had him since September the 12th. Okay, and you've heard I'm, that a... Go ahead, I'm sorry. I think I misstated that. I'm sorry. I've had him since September 14th. Okay, that's that's fine. A couple of days is not a, a big deal. Um, have you heard the department's or the department's goals that they've stated? Yes, that has been uh, communicated and we've discussed it thoroughly. Okay. This child. You cut out. I didn't hear the full sentence. Oh, I apologize. I'm sorry. Do you believe that those goals are in the best interest of the child? I absolutely do. Okay. Um, would you agree with me that you're able and willing to do anything and everything that's needed to protect this child and to help him thrive? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have any concerns about the child's health or well-being that are not being addressed? No, ma'am. He is happy, healthy, um, growing, crawling, um, saying some of his first I'm words. Sorry, I don't know if he froze on my side or... Did it, is anyone else able to hear me? Sorry, it froze for just a moment. I'll re-ask my question. Okay. Do you have any concerns about the child's uh, health or safety or welfare that you don't feel are being addressed? No, ma'am. Carson is a happy, healthy baby, crawling, standing up on things, and, um, you know, even catches himself standing alone for five or ten seconds. He's doing very well. Shows, shows no further, you know, or extraordinary needs. Great. So the other question I have is that, are you, where are you on your licensing? I had everything finished. Um, there was some miscommunication um, with the licensing service. They had me incorrectly put in the computer. All of my classes and everything were complete, but I was reassigned a new agent last week. And um, I was amazed at what could be accomplished in 48 hours. My home study was supposed to be today, and it was rescheduled due to the obvious uh, in inclement weather that we're having. And it is rescheduled for Monday morning. Okay, is, that, that's fantastic. So you is that what the only thing that you're lacking? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then after that, you feel like, all of the issues, everything you have should be, it should be taken care of. There should be no other issues needed. Yes, ma'am. My background check, all of that was final last week. And per my discussion with my new assigned uh, representative, she stated that she felt like we would be finished with mid-May, late May at the latest. Okay. And are you, you are willing and able to be a, a permanent placement with for Carson, however that may look? That is absolutely a yes. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the witness. All right, thank you. Any other questions from anyone for Ms. Goins? No, sir. Okay, ma'am, thank you very, very much. Okay, any anything else from anyone else? All right. No, sir. Uh, okay, thank you. All right, the court uh, notes that uh, neither neither parent is present uh, nor uh, compliant with their restricted services. Uh, the court finds that there would be a continuing danger to, uh, and it would be contrary to the child's welfare to be placed back with a parent at this time. TMC has continued, placement is continued. Uh, our next setting is for a final trial, July the 5th, July the 5th at 1.30. Dismissal date is July the 29th, 2024. So thank you all very, very much for your hard and good work in this case. And uh, we will see you uh, in a couple of months for final trial. All right, let's go hey, to number excuse. 19, the McKnight. Oh, yeah. For a, um, an adversary hearing. First calling for the mother, Kayla Jones. Yeah. Kayla Jones. All right, very good. I have you marked present. Uh, with uh, counsel and uh, Jeremy Sparks. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? It's very good. I have you marked present uh, with counsel. Okay. Make sure, uh, Mr. Kirkwood, you were there, correct? Correct, Robert. And yes, there, up there. Very good. All right. 
Okay, so um, Ms. McGee, is this uh, agreed or contested? It is agreed, Your Honor. Yes, okay. Thank you, Mr. Kirkwood, agreed or contested? If I could ask my client just to confirm what we spoke of earlier, Mr. Uh, Sparks, is this agreed or are we contesting at this time? Oh, agreed. Agreed, Your Honor. All right. Okay, uh, then uh, with that, uh, Mr. Hip, uh, if uh, you would uh, feel comfortable with that to release your witnesses, or do you want us to go ahead and get this on the record? No, I feel comfortable releasing all my witnesses. Is Dr. Uh, Isaac here? I yes, believe I see Dr. Isaac, yes. Dr. Isaac? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Richard Hip. How are you? Just fine, thank you. Okay, you're at the uh, assessment center. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all miss me yet? I was surprised to get a subpoena from you. I thought you had retired. <laughs> <laughs> I retired for about five minutes, and, wow. and uh, then the state called me and said they wanted my help. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate I appreciate you, and tell everybody I said hi. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, all y'all are released. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right. So, thank you, uh, Dr. Isaac. You are excused. Thank you very much, uh, all of you. Then, um, thank you very much. Okay, so let me get uh, Ms. Jones, Mr. Sparks, uh, the, and everyone who may testify as to this agreement. Uh, if you'll raise uh, your right hands at this time to be sworn in, please. I saw Ms. Rosoria uh, a moment ago, I believe. Okay. I'm, so, I'm here, Judge. I'm. Um, yes, here you are. Right. At the um, however, I'm just stepping in for Ms. Mays, who had to log off. Um, I did see her earlier, too. So. <laughs> Were, were you sworn just now? Um, no, sir. I believe the case um, the caseworker is this Ariel or Kayla? It's Ariel. Okay, there she's here, Judge. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Johnson. Were you sworn in? Yes, I was. Okay, perfect, <laughs> Mr. Hip. Uh, you may proceed. Well, I guess what I'm wondering is uh, we have an agreement for TMC to the agency. Um, that's my understanding. Beyond that, I don't know of any other terms. And Ms. Johnson, you're in agreement uh, for the department to take TMC? Yes, sir. All right. You're wanting the parents to work services with an eye towards being able to provide a safe environment for their children? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Any questions of Ms. Johnson? further. Okay, Ms. McGee, you may call your client. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call Kayla Jones. Yes, please, state, please state your name. Kayla Jones. Okay, and Ms. Jones, um, we've spoken about your options here today. And it's your decision to agree to give the department temporary managing conservatorship of your children today, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, you're not admitting um, any abuse or neglect of your children at this time. You're just agreeing to the department's request for temporary custody today, correct? Yes, ma'am. You understood that you could have had a contested hearing, um, but this is your decision today. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from anyone for Ms. Jones? All right. Thank you. Mr. Kirkwood, you may call your client. All right, Jeremy, state your name for the record. Jeremy Sparks. And you, and we have also extensively talked about your options as well as this case. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And it is your choice uh, at this time to allow CPS to be uh, temporary management services while you work some services. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And while you uh, admit that you are the cause of the injury, um, of the baby that went to the hospital that let her go into the hospital it was an accident, correct? Yes, sir. But you're unaware of any other previous injuries, is that correct? I'm unaware of any other previous injuries. Okay. And you recently found um uh a residence, is that correct? Yes, sir. Um I now have a home that I'm living in. Okay. And uh I'm going to ask you to make certain that you give that information to CPS and I will do so as well, okay? Yes, sir. And then you are uh, about to start employment as well. Is that correct? Yep. And can you tell the court where you will be working? 
I will be working at Black Line um, Cold Storage located in Baytown. Okay. Are you aware of your schedule as of yet? Not completely aware. The um, I have already completed the um, the hiring process. I'm just waiting for the date to start. Correct. And in the event that work becomes a, uh, a hindrance to visitation, I want to make certain that you make your uh, ex worker aware of that as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Pass witness. All right. Thank you. Any questions from anyone for Mr. Sparks? All right. Thank you, Ms. Holliday. I, I don't want to assume that you're in agreement, but just let me know. I'm not opposed. Okay. And do you have any witnesses? No, Judge. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So let me ask um, you, Ms. Jones, Kayla Jones, and you, Mr. Sparks, Jeremy Sparks. Uh, is either of you aware of, of any Alaskan or Native American um, Indian heritage membership uh, or membership eligibility? First, no, you no. no, Mr. Sparks. No. Okay. All right. Oh, Your Honor, I have not had the opportunity to uh, go over um, affidavit of indice with my client. If we can get that on the record as well, we we can. So you may proceed, Jeremy. Uh, call you back to the stand. And okay, can you uh, advise the court uh, if you have any uh, savings at this current time? Um, as in with the affidavit, no, um, I'm saying, no, 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 I'm saying, said, do you have any, was, I'm sorry, I'm, do you have any money saved in the bank at this time? No, okay, and as of today, right now, are you currently working? No, I'm not, as of today, currently working. No, and do you have any other property, or, or let me go there, do you own any property, land? Um, no, no, sir. Okay. Do you own a home? I don't know. No, sir. Okay. And uh, do you have any, uh, do you own a residence at this time or are you leasing or renting? I am currently renting. Okay. Do you have anything, anything else that of value that might be able to assist you in hiring of an attorney? No, sir. Okay. And are you telling the court at this time that you are indigent? Meaning that you can't afford attorney. Right. And um, are you currently under any other order to uh, from any other state to provide for your children? Um, no, sir. Order? Um, no, sir. Okay. Uh, pass witness. All right. Thank you. And Mr. Sparks, are you in opposition to uh, against the department's petition, which uh, includes the possible termination of your parental rights? Is that something that you're against? Yes. Okay. Now, let me ask you um, how your uh, paternity has been established. Uh, we'll start with first with the oldest child, uh, N.M., or were you married to the mother when she was born? When the child was born? No, I, I wasn't married. The reason I named I didn't ask the question. No, let me just, Mr. Sparks, just answer yes or no. So you, no, you weren't married to the mother. Or did you sign any paperwork at the hospital um, saying that you're the father of either child? Yeah. It, was that a yes? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I can hardly hear you because of the rain. I apologize. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I know you're breaking up a little bit. That's fine. It, it's yes, part of the course today. All right. So you, you signed acknowledgments of paternity. You're saying for both children when each was born, correct? Yes, sir. So you're on the birth I, certificate. Birth certificate. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank yes, you. And um, okay. Any questions from anyone for Mr. Sparks on, on those issues? All right. The court does find that uh, uh, Jeremy Sparks uh, does qualify for court-appointed attorney. Uh, Mr. Kirkwood, uh, if you're amenable, I would like to continue your appointment 
uh, for this case for Mr. Sparks. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And um, Ms. Ms. McGee, uh, do you want to ask uh, Ms. Jones uh, similar questions? I, I don't know if we've done this already with Ms. Jones, frankly. Right, Your Honor, I can't remember, but I did um, file her affidavit of indigence on April 19th. Okay. Um, I can't remember if we talked about it at the last setting either, Your Honor, but it, it is on file. But okay. I can ask her more. Yeah, it's on file, we, but we did not do that at the last hearing. Okay. So let maybe if um, the court is going to hereby take judicial notice of uh, Mother's Affidavit of Indigence, uh, if I didn't at the last hearing, and I, I wonder maybe if Ms. Williams, if it's possible, Ms. Williams, for you to forward that to me. If you can't do that right away, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we could probably uh, ask the mother um, the questions. But and Judge, this is Keith Kirkwood. I have seen it and have no objections. Okay. All right. Thank you. While while I'm waiting on that, um, based on the the evidence and the agreements, uh, the court does make uh, the requisite findings. Names the department, the temporary managing conservator of the children sets this case for a status hearing on June the 7th, June the 7th at 9 a.m. Our dismissal date is April the 14th, 2025. Now, if somebody will remind me what type of placement uh, the children are in and, and make sure to let me know whether they're together. Hi, this is Ms. Johnson, the caseworker in investigation. They're in a foster home and they're placed together. Okay, thank you. Now, have um, have the parents filled out uh, caregiver resource forms and gotten those back to the department? Yes, they have. Okay, and is the department uh, exploring any relative or alternate placements based on one or both of those uh, forms? At this time, we don't have any possible um, placements. Judge, if I may? You, you Certainly. I, uh, my client informed me today that uh, he needs to add somebody. I just want to let everybody be aware. He wanted to add somebody to that to that form to be looked at, but they're out of state. All right, and he'll be getting that information, or you'll be getting that to the department. That is correct. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, the court is uh, reviewing uh, the mother's. Uh, statement of inability to afford payment of court costs or an appeal bond in a justice court, uh, which was, uh, as Ms. McGee said, filed uh, back in April. And uh, Ms. Jones, has your financial situation uh, changed uh, much from April the 17th of this year to today? No, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Based on the mother's uh, uh, affidavit uh, of indigence, uh, and uh, ma'am, you're you're certainly in opposition to the de department's petition, which includes the termination of your parental rights. Yes. No, sir. You you don't want your parental rights terminated. Permanently, no, correct? Sir. Okay. All right. So the court does find that the mother qualifies for a court appointed attorney. Uh, I would like to continue your appointment, uh, Ms. McGee, if you are uh, able. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, Mom and Dad, thank you very much for your cooperation, your being here, and your agreement and your willingness and readiness to work services, putting your children first, as it were. So you heard me mention our next court date, which is for the status hearing on June the 7th at 9, uh, June the 7th at 9 a.m. Now, between today and then, the department will get with you, uh, your support system, your attorneys, um, all of the court appointees in this case in what's called a family group conference. From there, in conference with the department, you will uh, come up with, in, in sort of a give and take situation, uh, service plans. Um, lists of resources, classes, evaluations, uh, services, and the like. 
uh, that you will need to comply with and um, in order to provide your uh, children with a safe environment. Okay, on the 6th, on the 7th rather of June, those service plans are going to become orders of the court, okay? And if you don't abide by those plans uh, and demonstrate that you've um, acquired any new knowledge or skills that you need, that you've made changes that need to be uh, made, the department might seek the termination of your parental rights on the basis that you didn't comply with your service plans, which by that time will have been made an order of the court. So do you all understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, and you would also need to understand, and I'll tell you this because I, I have to, and because it's very important at every hearing in this case, that if at the end of this case, if you're unwilling or, or unable to provide a safe environment for your children, your parental rights may be further restricted or even terminated permanently. So I need to know that you all understand that. Um, I know you don't want that to happen. So we're early enough to say at this point, then then don't let it, okay? Work, work your services, okay? Um, now, so any questions from either of you at this point? Again, we'll come back with your uh, service plans to be made in the court at that status hearing on June the 7th. I'll see at that time if you have any questions about those, okay? All right, so don't waste any time, get started, okay? All right. Okay. So very, very good. Then um, you all are excused. I will sign orders that comport with my uh, my ruling, and we'll see you all back for the status hearing June the seventh at nine a.m. That we hope will be in person. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So all right. Take very good care, and make the most of, of your visits. Thank you. Nine in the Thank you. Of N -E Thank you. And G. E for a permanency okay. review before final order. Uh, is the mother Justice Edwards still with us? Judge, I think they're still in the breakout room. I just texted more. Okay, let me uh, close. Those. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Let me close out all those rooms. Um, let me call for the father, Corey DeLeon. Corey DeLeon. Corey DeLeon. Right. If you're on the phone, sir, please press star six to unmute. Otherwise, unmute your device. Announce your presence, Corey DeLeon. No answer, nor is anyone presently in the waiting room. All right, so we have Ms. Moore for Ms. Wheeler and the mother. We have Mr. Gott and Mr. Kirkwood. So with that, uh, let me get uh, Ms. Edwards and uh, everyone who may testify, if you'll raise your right hands to be sworn. Ms. Please. Adams, you may proceed. Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to call Caleb Blanchard. Um, it's actually going to be me, Stephanie. I apologize. Okay. Well, then I would call Liza Francia Siebert. Um, so our, who, is, who is the assigned caseworker on this case? Uh, Caleb Blanchard. All right. And are you standing in for him? Yes, ma'am. And are you aware of all the situations that have been going on in this particular case? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you notify the court as to the placement issues that we're having with the children? So um, the biggest placement issue that we are having is that uh, Kids Harbor has put in a placement uh, discharge request for the youngest child. Um, that child must be out of that placement by 518. Um, they are willing to work with us and possibly allow um, her to finish the school year. But um, the other issue this presents is that there is a court order preventing the separation of the siblings. So we do require some direction as to whether we are leaving the oldest child there or whether we are attempting to find a placement for both of them um, with the knowledge that we might not even be able to succeed in that. Okay. Um, meaning that they might both be in, in CWAP? Um, it, I mean, that's a possibility, but more likely it, you know, it could be that we find a placement for the oldest child. And then that puts in question as to if we were able to find a placement for the oldest child and they have to be separated anyway, why would we remove him from somewhere that he is doing well? Or, um, that we just can't find a placement for both of them to go to. So are we asking the court to, um, lift under these circumstances, lift the order that 
makes the children be at the same placement, at least temporarily, with the understanding that we would, or that we, I think we, uh, would like the children to be together, but it might not be possible. Yes, unfortunately, if we cannot find a placement, which we did submit for both of them, if we cannot find a placement for them to be together, we are asking that um, the oldest child be allowed to remain where he is and the youngest child be moved. Say there wasn't an order. Does the department feel like it is best to keep the children together? Absolutely. Okay. So you said that you said that one of the children was doing fine in their current placement. I just wanted to make sure. So we want the children together as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think it would be detrimental to separate them, but and the unfortunate circumstances that we are in it appears it may have to be that way. Or either is either child on psychotropic medication? They both are. Or is it within state and federal guidelines? Yes. They, yeah, they undergo had a, medication reviews. Oh, I apologize. Yes. That's about what I was going to ask. Tell me about the medication reviews. Um, they have monthly medication reviews, um, and we do get information as to how they're doing with us. Are they up to date in all their, their medical and dental needs? Yes, they are. Both currently enrolled in school? Yes. Doing well enough? Yes. Again, um, the oldest child doing very well, um, both with grades and behaviors and with his participation in extracurricular, extracurricular activities. The youngest child uh, does struggle with behaviors and does have 504 accommodations to assist with that, but still does struggle with behaviors. Do you know when their school is out? Not the exact date. I do know it's at the end of this month. In regards to the parents, um, does the mother have a service plan? I'm going to yes, object to anything as to uh, Miss Edwards, unless uh, Liza has personal knowledge, everything that she would know would be hearsay. I don't have an issue with taking up the issue on placement today, but if the caseworker can't be here, well, and I also over, have evidence. Overruled, overruled at this point. Uh, overruled at this point. Does the mother have so, a service plan? Yes, ma'am. Has it been made in order of the court? Yes, ma'am. Is she currently compliant? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. No, ma'am. Um, have you had the opportunity to review the record? Yes, ma'am. And by the record, I mean the official CPS records of the department. Yes, ma'am. Um, are you a, the custodian of those records? Yes, ma'am. Are those records kept in a regular manner? Um, are those, those in a regular manner? Um, shoot. Uh, in, in a regular manner? Yes, ma'am. Are they reliable? Yes, ma'am. Um, are you familiar with what um, services the mother has not completed? Yes, ma'am. What are they? Objection, hearsay, and all of her questions for business records. If she wants to admit the record, we can talk about that, but that does not get around the hearsay of her testifying to it. Any response, Ms. Adams? Yes, Your Honor, I do. She's the, she, I pl pr has proven her up as the custodian of the records and she can testify as to what's in them. All right. Judge, the proof up for the custodian is for when you're putting the records into evidence. It's not to substitute for testimony. And I understand. Ms. Uh, Ms. Francia Siebert, do you have personal knowledge as to what services mother has left or has not done? Um, not from the contacting providers, no. It's just from reviewing the records. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to allow that from the records. You may answer the question. Overrule the objection at this point. What... Um, which services has she not? Well, let's start. Let's let me let me start over. What services has she completed? So she has participated. Running objection on this, or do I just need to keep objecting to every question? Well, keep objecting if if you. Okay, objection here, say. All right. Overruled. No personal knowledge. Overruled. You may answer. She has completed um, a couple of substance abuse assessments. She has completed some random drug testing and hair follicles. She has completed a psychological evaluation and a domestic violence assessment. Okay. Is she visiting her kids? Objection. Um, here. Overruled. Yes. 
Are those visits going well? Objection, your side. Overruled. Um, I, I couldn't tell you um, how they're doing during the visitation, um, okay, just children's question. behaviors. Okay, next question. Okay, how often is she visiting? Objection, hearsay. Um, once a, my apologies, once a month for each child in person and then twice a month on the phone with each child. Um, what services has she not completed yet? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Um, she still needs to complete substance abuse treatment. Um, at this point, it needs to be inpatient drug treatment. She still needs to complete a psychiatric evaluation. She still needs to complete um, domestic violence um, treatment as a victim. And she needs to continue consistent drug testing. Um, what's the current goal? The primary goal is unrelated adoption with a concurrent of relative adoption. Do we have any um, family members available at this time? Not at this time, no ma'am. Do are we are we looking at anyone at all? So uh, we don't have any pending home studies at this time. I know that we've um, explored a couple of family members that have been provided to us and have not found somebody that we could do a home study on. Um, is there one father? Yes. Okay. And has he been served? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, do you know if he's been in contact with the department? Um, contact has not been consistent. Um, does he have a service plan? Yes, ma'am. Has it been made in order of the court? Yes, ma'am. Is, is he in compliance? He is not. What is the department asking for today? We are asking for clarification on the children's um, present court order um, and uh, to find both parents not compliant. All right. Are we asking to maintain temporary managing conservatorship? Yes. Um, would it be a, a safe situation to send them back home to either parent at this time? No, ma'am. Can you tell me why? Um, the department would have concerns with the lack of services and with sobriety. Is that what it is that in regard to which parent? To both. Pass the witness. Okay. Uh, Ms. Francia Siebert, uh, regarding the mother's um, drug related services, did you say inpatient? It is now being recommended, yes, Your Honor. Inpatient. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ms. Moore? Um, you haven't ever had a conversation with my client, have you? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. You haven't ever observed a visit, have you? That's correct. Have You haven't ever seen these children or talked to them, have you? That's correct. You haven't talked to any of the service providers in this case, have you? Correct, yes, ma'am. So every bit of information that you're testifying to is information that came from someone else, is that right? It came from our records. I was And able that came to from, who did it come from in the records? Um, different entries okay. from different individuals. Different people, right? And yes, you don't have any guarantee of knowing if what is put in records is accurate, do you? You just have to trust the person putting it in there. Um, just like I would have to trust when they talk to me about it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you aren't even 100% up to date on this case because you testified that she still needs to do her psychological evaluation. But the permanency report that was filed beginning of April says that that has been completed. Um, I testified that she needed to complete a psychiatric evaluation. I also testified okay. that she did complete her psychological. Okay, so the psychiatric evaluation, is that the one that you guys are wanting at MHMR? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so you can't really testify to the conversations that Caleb has had with the client where she's asking him for help because MHMR is not giving her what she needs and he blows her off. You can't testify to that because you don't have any knowledge about that, do you? Objection, Your Honor. She's um, testifying to things that aren't in evidence. She's yeah, not testifying. She's asking yeah. questions about things that aren't in evidence. Sustained. You aren't aware of Caleb's conversations with my client as to the psychiatric Objection, Your Honor. I'm, I'm going to, if she's going to tell us about different people's conversations, that's inappropriate. Sustained. Judge, their entire witness was hearsay. Like, there's no way that I can defend this client. There's no way that I can get the evidence into the record that you need to hear without the caseworker here. 
Well, it's not, I, it doesn't do justice to where this case is and the things that, that this client needs ordered for her to help her be successful. Right. I, I sustain the objection. Um, next question. My request at this time, Judge, is to recess this hearing to another date when Mr. Blanchard can be available so that Ms. Wheeler can present the evidence to the court that the client has that relates directly to Mr. Blanchard so that we can request the changes in this case that would be, we believe, appropriate and beneficial that we can't do without him here because there's not a representative that has any knowledge. Is uh, I believe I saw Mr. Blanchard's device earlier. Is he unavailable for the balance of the afternoon? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. I don't want to recess the part, Judge. I'm okay going with hearsay or whatever on the placement issue. I do think that we need to address that today. But as to the services, I just can't go forward. Well, I, I expect uh, to hear from your client shortly uh, in terms of her version of her compliance. And yes. Anything you would offer. Well, you may so. hear from her. Um, however, I do not believe that. I don't believe that it's fair to this client to continue this with the issues that she's having with the caseworker without the caseworker here. Well, I don't I don't know of any issues of the that your client has with the caseworker or vice versa. That's that's not into evidence at this point. I know, which is why I need the caseworker here. <laughs> well, let me back up just a little bit. The psychiatric evaluation was that by way of the psychological recommendations or was that just straight up in the service plan from day one? I don't know, Judge. I don't have a copy of the service plan because I'm standing in for Wiss Wheeler and I would object to Laza testifying about it because it's hearsay. Ms. Francia Siebert, do you, do you know, notwithstanding Ms. Moore's objection, which I'll overrule, was the psychiatric uh, in the service plan when the, when the service plan became an order of the court? It was a recommendation of the psychological. Okay. All right. So, um, Ms. Ms. Adams, do you have any objections to uh, continuing uh, this hearing to 5-8? If somebody needs to appear virtually, it's going to be in person. But if somebody has good cause to appear virtually, I'll take that up. I am going to uh, make a decision relative to um, the order not to separate. I don't I don't have an issue. Uh I think I've heard that this is Miss Wheeler's case anyway, so maybe she can be here it, instead. Uh, On that we, day, I'm not aware. Do we know about Miss uh, Purdue Wheeler's availability, Miss Moore, on the 8th of this month? She might already be there. I don't know. I've just texted her. I'll let you know if I hear back. I would typically be willing to stand in for her, but I am in another county that day. Um, mm. I am yeah. sure if she's not available she can find someone too it's just we want to make sure that mr blanchard is able to be there stand by he well, will he will not be and judge i'll be in trial as well reminder oh, that's right you sure will yeah okay so ms moore are, are you contending that the department specifically mr blanchard the, or the caseworker is not um, making reasonable efforts to uh, assist the mother in getting in with MHMR or with tri yes. for the psychiatric? Yes. Okay. Well, I would fully expect that to be um, taken care of by the time whenever we <laughs> reach. Bear with me just a moment. Ms. Moore, do you want to try to put on any evidence to show that your client is compliant? If we are resetting that portion of the hearing, I would like to wait. Um, there's also some documentation that the client has been trying to get into my inbox um, since our breakout room that I have still not received yet that I think would go to that compliance. Okay, so stand by, stand by, stand by. Um, let... Mr. Kirkwood, um, let me hear from you and if you will also uh, facilitate my hearing from CASA uh, in regard to the narrow issue of um, placement and 
separating the children. Um, so, so if you will let me know that, call call Casa. But I also, before we do that, Ms. Francia Siebert, um, what are the children's respective, and you can just use their initials, or you can say youngest and oldest, um, or do they have the same level of care? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know that answer to that. But by all accounts, GE is doing well on the placement. Yes. And the placement is saying you have until 518, but we might be able to work with you relative to the end of school. Correct. Which you believe to be in May, the end of May. Yes. Ish. Okay. And Judge, before we move her to the next attorney, can I ask her one question on the placement? Which may lead to three, but just for the narrow issue of the placement. Okay. Yes. Um, I know the department would prefer to have the kids placed together. So my question is, if by the time that she has to be removed from that placement, if you haven't found a placement for both of them and the court does allow you to separate them, will you be able to continue to look for a placement for both of them together? Once the, another placement is secured for one child. I'm so sorry. I don't know if it was my internet, but you like, it, it didn't come through clearly. Well, that might just be because I talk fast. Okay. Um, what I'm trying to <laughs> find out basically, and I'm just going to say what I'm trying to find out because I can't really put it into a question right now. But if you guys were permitted by the court to separate the children, okay? And so you find a placement for only the one child that's being discharged, you leave the other child where he's at. Does the fact that then both of those kids have a placement make it where you're not able to continue to look for a placement that could take both of them? Uh, no, we could still, we could do both. We could do both. Okay, we could so, continue to look for a placement for both of them. And as a matter of fact, we did request a legal risk broadcast for that same purpose as well. Okay, so then if one of them had to be moved, it's not like we have to now come back to court or anything special has to happen. You could realistically do another move to get them back in the same place. That would be our goal. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. That's what I needed to know. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Johnson, Karen Johnson, there yes, you are. Sir. This is you, right? And you were sworn, yes? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, so let me hear what your recommendations are and your basis for those uh, relative to uh, the placement issues that I'm sure you're very well acquainted with. Correct. Uh, first choice is obviously to keep the children together. That is both of their wishes. Um, mm -hmm. After speaking with the elder child, he um, understands that the possibility may not be that they are able to stay together. And his only request is that if they can't stay together, that they be close enough that they can visit each other often. He wants to check on her. He wants to be with her. And obviously she wants to be with him. So um, my recommendation is to keep them together if possible. If it's not possible to continue to look for a place that they can be back together. Uh, as soon as possible. Um, I would like to leave the elder child where he's at because he is thriving. He's made friends. He's doing well in school. He's in extracurricular activities. Um, he likes his roommates at the placement. And I'd like to see him stay there if possible, um, unless he can be with his sister somewhere else. Did that answer your question? Okay. Okay. Yes, it, uh, it, it, it did. Um, do you believe that um, GE will continue to thrive there even if NE has to be moved? I do. I do okay. believe he will. Now, it, it may or may not be too late to um, recoup um, or recover or remediate this placement for NE. But can you think of any services that she's not getting that she needs relative to these issues that she's having? Well, the only thing I can think of, and I don't even know if it's actually considered service. I'm still pretty new at this, and I'm not sure what's available. But I would love to see 
um, someone be able to actually be alongside her and and help her as she, you know, on the day to day, just one on one, where when she has the outbursts, they're able to guide her into how to properly um, respond instead of react. I think that she just needs some training. And I think that she would be very responsive to a one on one person that would be like her person. I don't know if that's even possible, but like a mentor of some kind that could actually be with her and teach her these things so that she can stay there. But I know that placement can't handle, you know, putting another staff there. So I don't really know what what's available. Well, the, the problem with that is that's too far too good of an idea. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, do you do you know, I mean, qualitatively and quantitatively both what what type of counseling she's receiving, the, the youngest? Oh, I know she's doing some play therapy. I'm not sure. She is with a counselor. We have yet to be able to speak with that counselor, although that's on our what we'd like to do. Um, Karen that, Kernahan could probably answer that best. Okay. If you know, is that counselor kind of uh, tied to Kids Harbor? I do not know that. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. That's that's fine. And um, CASA continues to explore uh, relative placements. We are calling and leaving messages. We have, I have yet to have a return phone call. So, um, are, and you, are you wanting the mother, Miss Edwards, to continue to do the same, try to think of um, family or alternate placements? We would accept any kind of, you know, help that we can get. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions from anyone? for Ms. Johnson, Mr. Kirkwood, or anybody on this narrow issue. Okay, any any input um, recommendation from you, Mr. Kirkwood, on that issue? I echo what everybody else is saying, Judge. I believe uh, them being together is best, uh, given the uh, difficulties that any is having at the placement if they do have to, uh, I would hope that she can stay to the end of the school year, but if they do have to remove her uh, and find a place for her, that we continue to look for somewhere that they could be together. All right. Anything else from anyone else on that issue? So I'm going to rule on that, and then we'll talk about a date to which we can come back for the balance of the permanency hearing. All right. So based on the evidence, the best interest, even the safety of the children, uh, the court's order is uh, going to hereby have the effect of lifting that previous order um, not to separate the children. Um, I will uh, order that the department continue to make reasonable efforts uh, to place the children together um, and until uh, the department is able uh, to do that. Um, uh, GE may remain in that placement unless and or until uh, a place, an appropriate place for the both of them together becomes available, if if at all. Uh, further and importantly, uh, the department is ordered to continue to make reasonable efforts to uh, keep NE at Kids Harbor. Um, until the end of the school year so that she might finish out the school year. Again, the order is to make reasonable efforts. It may not at the end of the day be possible. Um, so that's that's the order of the court. Any Anything else, Ms. Adams, concerning that request that I need to be more specific on? Not that specific request, Your Honor. I do have one more statement before you conclude the entire case. Okay, go ahead. Um, I feel that it's a much more efficient use of the court's time if the department knew what Ms. Moore's issues were with the department. So I would ask that we get in, that I get an email explaining what needs, what she's asking for so that we can see if we can take care of it prior to any such hearing date. And I will, that is noted, and I will talk to Ms. Wheeler about it as she's the one who's handling this case. So I'll leave that to her discretion. I think we shouldn't go through with the next hearing without having that from somebody. Well, we have to have the next hearing for compliance purposes. 
which I would love to go ahead and have it right now. Well, I don't, uh, I don't know when our 120 days is up, uh, just because I don't have the previous uh, uh, date of the, the status hearing previously. But um, so apparently, five eight is Miss Wheeler's not available that day. On five eight. No, she's in another county, and she is no. right next to her phone right now. If we have other dates, I can ask her. Mister, uh, Mister Kirkwood is not available on five eight either. So stand by, please. Would would everyone, including Mr. Blanchard and uh, Ms. Pardue Wheeler, be available on the morning of May the 9th? And would there be an agreement to do this virtually? Uh, Your Honor, on with regards to Mr. Blanchard, I'm not sure that he's going to be available or when that's going to be. So I may have to assign a new worker to get quickly up to date um, so that they can have that um, contact with all the providers and the mother and the father in this case. And for me, Judge uh, Eden Girkwood, um, possibly uh, I have that trial and it's three counts of uh, aggravated sexual assault of children. So not for certain how long that trial will last. Right, right. I think Ms. Wheeler's on that one, too. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Williams or, or anyone, can you tell me when uh, when the status hearing was? It might have been March the 25th. I think that is correct, Judge. We were, we were just here. Judge, you're saying the Edwards case? I have a date of October the 6th, 20. 23, I mean, 20, yeah, I, I think October the 6th. Hmm. Okay, that, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm but the saying, status, correct. I'm saying status. I said status. But what I meant, I'm sorry, what I meant was the initial perm. That was February 2nd. February 2nd? Yes, sir. All right, so I, I think uh, the 325 was the motion to change. Uh, modify visitation. That is correct, Judge. You're correct. Okay. So you're saying February the 2nd? Okay. Is, um, are, are we dealing with like a date of return for Mr. Blanchard? Like, uh, I do not have one yet, Your Honor. Okay. All right, how how about May the 16th, everyone? May the 16th for a continuation of the permanency before final order in Edwards. Keith Girkwood, I believe this should be fine with me. I just messaged Ms. Wheeler. She's been in constant communication for the last little bit, so I'm sure I'll hear back shortly. Okay, all right, very uh, good. Worst case, if she's not available, I'm available, and I can, she said she can't do the AM, she can do the PM. I'm available both morning and afternoon. So if all you have is the AM, I can come and cover it. Um, actually, I I do have the afternoon right now. Um, okay. Ms. Adams, Ms. Adams, do you or Mr. Hip have the afternoon of May the 16th? I have someone available. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Francia Siebert, is that and CASA? Yes, I'm available. Okay. Yes, I'll make that work. All right, thank you. So that just leaves Mr. Gott. Yes, sir, that'll work. Okay, very good. Now, um, I certainly do not mind traveling to Liberty. It's my headquarters after all. Um, but it's a little easier for me to schedule a Zoom than it is to beg for a courtroom. So are, are you all in agreement to doing this virtually? We don't have to. No objection. Ms. Wheeler says as long as it's set after 10 a.m., then she will agree to virtual. But she's not available. So you said afternoon, so it's fine. She'll agree to virtual. Okay, well... Could she make it at 10 a.m.? 
She said she'll be busy till at least then. So I would maybe not cut it that close. I don't because I don't know what she has that day. So if she, maybe she's in another court, you know, it might go after. Okay, so why don't we set it at one thirty? Okay. Any objections? Any objections to one thirty? No objection. Okay. Okay. And I'll agree to virtual as well. All right. Thank you at one thirty. Virtual. Okay. All right. Then um, the Edwards uh, permanency before final order is uh, the balance of it is hereby continued to May the 16th at one thirty, and that virtual. All right. So with that, uh, you all are excused on the Edwards matter. Actually, Judge, she just messaged me again. And now she said, can you please do it at 2.30? I think she realized there was something on her calendar. Okay, so um, are there any objections to 2.30 instead of 1.30 on 5.16? That's fine, Your Honor. All right, so uh, that will be 2.30 hereby instead of 1.30. Again, May the 16th, virtual. Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you very much. Uh, you all are excused. Thank you. Indian. Thank you very much okay. for a Thank permanency you, review before yeah. final order is the mother Stevie Kersey present. Stevie Kersey, Stevie Kersey. What about the father, Jim Bailey? Jim Bailey, Jim Bailey. If either of you is um, on the phone, press star six to unmute. Otherwise, unmute your device and announce your appearance. Stevie Kersey, Jim Bailey, no answer. No one's in the waiting room. Uh, Mr. Hip, you may call your first. Who's the caseworker? Audrey Lynch. Ms. Lynch, uh, where uh, where's this child placed? The child is placed in a foster home. Basic level. Yes. Okay. No special needs or concerns. Um, the child is actually a nine-month-old baby. Uh, he is in, he has some developmental delays. He's in some therapies for strengthening and stuff. He does um, physical therapy and occupational therapy, um, but he's thriving. He's doing very well. Um, he was doing SST two times a month. That was re reduced to once a month. He's met his goals for tummy time. Um, mm, He's coming along. The foster parents have gotten some educational tips from the therapies, um, and they've been working with him at home as well as his appointments with uh, with the professionals. So he's he's doing really well. Can he sit up? I think that he can sit up for just maybe a few seconds. I don't. I don't. I, that's something they're still trying to work on. Uh, he doesn't stay sitting up for very long. Uh, he doesn't have. He has like some delays in his, uh, his motor skills and stuff. Uh, they're working with core strengthening because he has a hard time holding his head and stuff up. Well, does he have a diagnosis? No, not not at this time. But he, he had tested positive at birth. So right now they're just saying developmental delays and they're just working with him. And can he stand? No, he's only nine months old. I don't, I don't think that he's made it to progress. I mean, he'll be nine months old, I think. This week, he's about to turn nine months. Okay. Um, what's the goal for this child? Um, I believe the goals were family reunification. And do you know if it's that's changed? Um, sorry, the thunder. It's uh, kicking back up over here. What was the question again? I'm sorry. No, that's changed. I'm not sure if it has changed. Hold on, I have I'll have to check and see because we were staffing this one the same time we were staffing another one, and I don't want to confuse it. Okay, it'd be um, okay if I check my uh my court report real quick. Um, well, no, that's fine. Um, because I want to say that we changed it. I believe that we changed it from family reunification. Okay, are the parents engaged in services? Um. No, they're not. I have had communication with uh, Miss Kersey. Um, yeah. 
I haven't had communication and probably I think April was my last communication with her. I don't know where she's at at this time or a phone number for her. Um, the phone numbers that she had contacted me through uh, are no longer in service or belong to other people. And I get cursed out for contacting them. Um, but she did try to attempt to engage in a few services there for a little bit, but she never completed anything. And then she would move to another location. Okay. And what about the father of the alleged father? Um, the alleged father, I, I still have not found him. Um Miss Kersey actually gave me some information and said that she was at the same apartment complex as him in Port Arthur somewhere. Um, but he has yet to reach out and she hasn't provided an apartment number. Like, I, I don't know where or any information really still on him. Okay. All right. Uh, can this child be returned to the mother at this time safely? No. Okay. Pass the witness. Sorry, thank you, Ms. Trousdale. Yes, sir. Um, were you present at the FGC on April 16th? Uh, yes. Okay, and was mom present at that meeting? I don't recall her being there. Okay, and was the goal announced at that meeting? Yes, and I, I, I and think that's when the goal was actually changed. Okay. Um, but mom wasn't present, correct? So I don't believe, I don't recall her being at that meeting. Okay. Um, did you speak to her? Have you have you spoken with her since April sixteenth, since that meeting? Mm, I have to, have to remember. I don't remember exact date that was the last time. I want to say that it was either the end of March or beginning of April was the last communication that I had with mom. Okay. Did you I, make her aware of the goal? Did the goals were the, the goal goals thing? the goals were not changed the last communication that I had with her. They weren't changed yet. Okay. So so since April 16th, you've not spoken with her to let her know about the goal change, correct? I I haven't been able to get in contact with her. The numbers that I had for her that she was contacting me through belong to other people. And um okay. so no. okay. I, I I'm just I'm just making it clear that she she's probably not aware of this goal change is all I'm correct probably not okay okay um and did she go into a drug treatment facility she did um in february i think it was the beginning of february she had mm -hmm. um, contacted me and went into a detox and went into positive recovery uh it was the beginning of february okay and how long was she in that program she I want to say was unsuccessfully discharged from there towards the end of February. She was only in there, I believe, maybe two weeks. And then she went on a day pass and never returned. Okay. Um, and the, her last location was uh, Port Arthur, correct? That's the last thing that she told me was from Houston to Port Arthur. Has she expressed to you um, any desire to continue her service plan? She has not really expressed. Um, she, she's expressed two different things to me in conversation. Okay. Um, when's the last time you reviewed her service plan with her? Um, I sent her her service plan when she was in San Antonio, and then when she came to Houston down on the south side in a motel, I sent it to her email again, and then when she was on the north side of Houston, I sent it to a new email address, and then I believe when she called, when she texted and was talking that she was in Port Arthur, I want to say she asked me for the family plan again, because every time she makes contact, she asked me for the service plan again. Okay. And she um, she was in the positive recovery rehab in February. Um, at that time, did you have a chance to go over the service plan with her? Yes. Each time that I sent her family plan to her, I was able to talk with her on the phone. She didn't just do text. She actually would talk on the phone. Um, and mm -hmm. we went over her service plan each time. Okay. 
Um, and she has, she has had contact with you though, um, since she's been out of rehab between yes. February, the end of February and April, she's maintained some type of contact with you, correct? Um, yes, I believe the last okay. time that was in March or end of March, beginning of April was my last contact with her. Okay, but she has expressed interest in continuing this case and and, and a she desire to a desire to try to try to get on track with her service plan. She has expressed interest in doing her services and then she expressed interest in leaving him where he's at. And then she's also expressed interest that if a family member is found, him to be a family member, she's expressed different things. She wants to do what's best for the baby is what she says. Okay. I'm passing on this. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bob. When it comes to the mother's visitation, what is the current schedule? Well, currently we were trying, We the current schedule for her, as I told her, is I'd like to do at least once a week um, visits. Although she has not maintained a constant or consistent communication and availability to actually schedule a visit, I, she has attended Zoom. I was able to to get her on a Zoom thing to be able to see. Oh, uh, okay, so how many of the in-person visits has she made, missed in, since our last court date, if you know? It would have been all of them. Okay. She how, many any. Uh, how many Zoom visits has she had since our last court date? One. Okay, so she's seen the child one time via Zoom, and is that it? Yes. Okay. Um, is it all right? I passed the witness at this time, Judge. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Hip. Allison. Is that Ms. Did you say Schultz? Allison? Sorry. Yes. Edith Schultz. Hi. And Hi. Uh, how's the child doing? He is doing much better, especially since they have started therapy. I've seen a very marked improvement. Okay. And, uh, did uh, the case for her correctly describe what I would notice about him? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. And have you been in communication with the mother? I no, not not since before the last court. I have not been able to get in communication with her. Nor the father or alleged father. No. No. Thank you. I pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Miss Trousdale. Have you had any contact with mom in the last two or three months? No. Uh, the last contact I had um, was well before the last court. So I've tried, but okay. she doesn't return. Okay. Thank you. I pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Mr. Buck. No additional questions, Josh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other, uh, Ms. Schultz, thank you. Any no other questions? No other question. No other witnesses. Okay, thank you. Um, let me ask if uh, we have the paternity registry search uh, back. Um, whoever can answer that question, the clerk or Ms. Lynch or Ms. Williams or Mr. Hip or anyone. Well, I I don't know, but I'm sure I will in just a moment. Yes, yeah, sir. We, right. we do. They were filed on uh, one twenty-five twenty-four. One twenty-five twenty-four. Yes, sir. And I've I've not, as far as you know, appointed an attorney to represent him. Let me check, Judge. Any objections to my taking judicial notice of the certificate of paternity registry search? No objections, yes, sir. No objection. All right. Thank you. So the court does hereby take judicial notice. And Ms. Williams, as soon as you get a chance, let me know uh, who is up next for appointment. Uh, he's up next. I don't think he's on the case. Mm. You say Mr. God? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So the court uh, will appoint... Uh, 
Mr. Gott to represent uh, the alleged Father Jim Bailey and and any unknown father. Okay. Anything else from anyone else? Okay. Right. Judge, um, yes, I would like to request. I would like to request mediation. I've had multiple conversations with my client. Um, I'm surprised she's not here today, but I do think um, some decisions need to be made. And I think mediation would help with that if the parties are all present and my client has an opportunity to ask some questions um, and just find out if she's going to move forward and participate or not. But based on my conversations with her, I think that would be helpful and I think a decision can be made. Okay. Do you think she can give Mr. Bailey a ride? To mediation? Yes. It will probably be virtual, but <laughs> I don't know, Judge. I don't know. I'm only, I'm only being a little I know bit. Speeches, but I don't know. I, I don't know where she is right now, Judge. Um, but I do think that she would participate in mediation. I, I will. I will um, send you all to mediation. Order you all to mediation before the trial, and the trial again is um, July the twenty second. July the twenty. 22nd at 1.30. Dismissal is August 19th, 2024. So let's make sure I sign uh, Mr. Gott's order um, and he is aware of that and especially the mediation as well. Um, thank you. So thank you. Okay, so there will be three orders that I will look uh, to sign on Kersey. Uh, again, no parents present to admonish, the uh, department has continued as TMC placement of, is approved to continue, uh, and the court would uh, further find that it would be uh, there would be a continuing danger. It would be contrary to the child's welfare, well-being, to be returned to a parent uh, today. All right. So thank you all very very much on uh, Kersey and good luck at mediation. Okay. Thank you, Judge. We right. dismiss that my last. Thank you. Do we have somebody? Yes, you may. Who I could stand in for Mr. Kirkwood? Uh, um, I believe we have a uh, one, one and a half year old. Judge, I'll be happy to stand in. I don't know if everybody will be in agreement to that, though. Well, I don't know that I'll give them a chance to object. To this. <laughs> okay. That's fair. Um, That's fair. So, uh, but if somebody could, could um, send uh, Ms. Moore the court report. Uh, and we'll uh, thank her for standing in for Mr. Kirkwood for the child. Um, I think last time we were together, we were looking for the child to be um, uh, in an adoptive placement. What number on the docket is this, Judge? I'm sorry. This is number, uh, number three in the interest of R.B., um, wow, I don't know why that's a 22 cause number. Anyway, let me get everyone who may testify. If you will raise your right hands to be okay, sworn. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hip, you may call your first. Case worker. Veronica Stubblefield. And where's this child placed? In a foster home. Okay. Is this child placed with his sibling yes okay and does he have any special needs no sir okay and what's the plan the plan is unrelated adoption with unrelated conservatorship and he's in his adopted home and this foster home is in the process of becoming licensed they're already licensed already okay um what's holding up what's what's preventing this child from being adopted right now do you know uh, so the case was just transferred to adoption prep so i am the adoption prep case worker for the child i got it and so you just got so it. yes sir well we actually just got the redacted case file back so right now we're just soon we'll be having um just the family to uh assign an attorney for them for the adoption and then that'll be it okay all right thank you pastor witness Okay, thank you, Ms. Moore. 
Um, is the child up to date on all of the medical and dental? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any concerns uh, for the health of the child? No, ma'am. He's very healthy. Pass the witness. All right, uh, Mr. Hip, uh, you may call your next. Thank you, Ms. Doublefield. Uh, Casa, if we have him. I'll be standing in for the advocate today. Okay, thank you, Ms. Croft. Okay, um, and um, you concur that the child's doing well? Yes, sir. Your only concern is that this adoption take place sooner rather than later, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. That's it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moore. No questions. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Croft. Uh, okay. Any Anything else from anyone else? Your Honor, if anyone has any questions, I do believe placement is on. All right. Thank you. That. Uh, placement. Okay. Let me... We're going to call you Ms. Foster. Okay, Ms. Foster, uh, if you can unmute, you don't have to turn on your video. If you can unmute, oh. or okay. Mr. Foster. <laughs> okay, um, just let me know whether you were sworn in. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. And which okay. child is that that you have in your hand? Okay, I, I stopped the video in hopes that we could... Uh, So go ahead. Let's let's see if they can hear. I'm going to change the name. Can Miss Foster? Can you hear me? She just texted me and said that she can't hear, and they froze. Mm -hmm. yeah. She just texted me that she I couldn't guess, hear, and there. I guess I don't have any questions then. Not yours. All right. One more time. Yeah, here's. We we can we can go ahead, Mr. Hip. I, I believe I can hear us now, Mr. Hip. We'll try. Okay, how's the child doing? Uh, he's doing good. Um, he's running around, uh, just playing a lot with his. Uh, we have an older older boy, and uh, and getting along with his baby brother too. Okay, so you've got three of them. Yes. Yes. When adopted. One, it's been adopted by the uh, the, the, the the judge okay. and the Lockwood, and then uh, the two brothers that we have now. Okay. Um, so everybody's doing fine. Yes, sir. Everybody's doing fine. Um, it seems like um, the baby brother has a little bit of. Uh, uh, the same thing as the older, I mean, his older brother, the congestion went close. In my, they're too young to be a, a diagnostic with uh, with asthma, mm -hmm. but they're already treating, giving them the treatment as, as of. Okay, so are you in the process of finding an attorney? Yes. Okay. Is there anything else you need from the agency at this point? Uh, no, sir. Everybody's been grateful and helpful. I'll pass the witness. All right. Thank you, Ms. Moore. I have no questions, Judge. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you all very, very much for all that you've done and uh, will do. Anything else from anyone else? All right. Uh, the court is uh, going to continue PMC with the department, continue the current placement, approve of the primary uh, permanency goal. And I'm going to go ahead and set this for our next permanency hearing and hope uh, that we do not uh, even come close to needing it because uh, we hope the adoption will be co consummated well in advance of that. But uh, our next hearing is here by October the 28th. October the 28th at 9 a.m. So I'll sign orders to that effect and thank you all very, very much. Continue uh, to take care. Thank you, Mr. Judge. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank you.
All right, Ms. Moore, thank you. In the interest of, mm -hmm. of uh, TLM so I believe for permanency review after final order, uh, who is my attorney on this one? Ms. Moore, is that you? Is the ad item? I am. Right, Ms. Moore, you're on. Okay. All right. And uh, Ms. Adams, are you taking this one? Ed, that's up to Mr. Hip. I'm just okay. available if he needs me. I'll do it. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, then let me get every everyone who may testify. If you will uh, raise your right Thank hand. You. Sworn Thank you. you okay. You may uh, call your first, Mr. Hip. Uh, caseworker, state your name, please. Yeah, I see Sauer. And Ms. Sauer, um, where is this child currently placed? Um, he's currently in an emergency shelter. Why? Um, he's had several placement changes over the last couple months from an RTC to CWAP, back to an RTC, um, to a psych hospital, back to CWAP, and now he's back at emergency shelter. How old is he? 17. He'll be 18 in 12 days. And what's the plan for him? Um, that is kind of up in the air at this time. Um, I have diligently worked with him and his team to try to offer him as much services as possible. Um, depending on the day and the hour, he typically denies any kind of assistance. Um, however, on the hours I've caught him, he's willing. I have had him sign the extended care agreement, which is filed with the court. Um, I have also had him set up with his aftercare providers through the Hay Center and with his PAL worker. Um, we have submitted several applications for transitional living programs and uh, supervised independent living programs. Um, so far, he's he does not qualify due to his um, behavioral history, juvenile history, and current lack of of complying and the the willingness to comply with any kind of program rules um he does have a appointment on his birthday set up to complete his housing voucher application um, to get housing with aftercare services he is not attending school he has been refusing over the several uh past months and he was working um however he started to call out at his job so placement started to refuse to take him. Um, then he had a placement change. He got another job. Um, same thing. He started to call out again. Um, so they started to refuse to take him. So um, he's just not as compliant as we would like, but I'm still trying to offer him as much services as possible. Okay. What happened? That's it. Do you have any uh, other No, I thought I said I passed this witness. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. You're not. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Okay. You ready, Cassie? I'm just kidding. Nice I, won't mess with you. <laughs> I won't mess with you. I won't mess with you. Okay. Um, so this emergency shelter he's done with in 12 days. And if he's not already approved for independent living, then where will he go in 12 days? Um, he will. We'll have to age out of care and he will go wherever um, he provides us to hopefully a friend's house um, or a local shelter. I've tried reaching back out to several family members and tried to come up with a plan with him. He has just not been compliant or realistic. Okay. So him signing the opting into care doesn't really if he wants to stay in care that doesn't remedy his situation as far as housing is what i'm hearing no because he still has to meet the requirements of school or work okay so can you tell me what needs to happen or what requirements he needs to meet in order to qualify for independent living or for you guys to provide him a place to live he needs to participate in school or some kind of a program to try to get credit recovery to get his diploma or try to attempt for the GED, which we've also tried to get him to study for and he has not complied. So the school is the one thing that's keeping him from having a place to go. Is that what I, is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
You don't recommend him going for the GED? Not with his special education services and accommodations in place. He is interested in doing online school. Is that something that you could get set up for him and he could go ahead and start working on? Yes. How soon can you get that set up? I'm very concerned about the amount of time that we have here, just a few days really, before he has nowhere to stay. So I was already getting it set up. Um, I already completed paperwork and stuff, but he ended up having a uh, placement change going in the psych hospital and he, he was not willing to comply. Um, so now that he's back in a semi-stable placement, I can try again. Um, I have to work with our education specialist um, because it's not a typical, normal education setting. So everything has to go through her for her approval. Is it even possible, if you know, to rush that approval through so we're not in a situation where he has nowhere to live? Um, I'm just not sure as how it works because we're at the end of the school year too. So I have to see if that program runs through like the summer and if that'll even work for him. How soon do you think you could look into that and let me know? I could probably have an answer next week, early okay. next week. Um, if that program doesn't work for the summer or for right now because it's the end of school and he starts going back to school, then what happens when school's out? Um, his power does not have a place to live. Well, his power worker is working with him. They have got a lot of applications in. So we already heard back from one that he's on the wait list because they're at capacity. Um, but she has submitted applications with him um, for about four or five others. So we're just others. What places other, to live? Schools. Yes, transitional living programs. Okay, for him to live. So. If you have to be enrolled in school to qualify for the independent living, what happens in the summertime when there's not school? Typically. Kids that are in it are either working or going to school. So they have or work, work or school. It's right. not just school? No, it's work or school or a combination. Okay. But he can't get a job right now because the placement that he's at is not transporting. Correct. Are they not transporting for him specifically or are they not transporting for any children? It's for the entire placement. Okay. If he were to use the work option, would he have to be employed full time? Um, no, it's required 80 hours a month. <coughs> okay. Is he compliant with his mental health medication? Sometimes, not all the time. Do you see patterns where when he's misbehaving or when he's being difficult that it's at a, a period of time where he hasn't taken his medicine? No, not necessarily. They're very compulsive and sporadic. Do you believe that his medications are working for him or do they need to be adjusted? They were just adjusted after he left the psych hospital a couple of days ago. So we're still waiting for that to basically regulate within his body so we can see how he's doing correct yes does he have any pending criminal or juvenile yes he has a criminal um case pending right now for family violence charge in montgomery county that's not through juvenile because he is 17. okay all right pass the witness do you know whether he has an attorney on that one, Ms. Sauer? No, he's still waiting to be served. And um, his placement and myself have tried to contact the sheriff's department to get more information. But because it's not juvenile and he's being basically charged as an adult, they will not give us any kind of information. They're just saying that he has to wait to be served. Ms. Sauer, can you be sure, as long as you're involved and able to, that no one is granted access to talk to my client about those criminal charges um, unless they go through me. Okay. As much as you can. Okay. Thanks. I have no other questions, Judge. Okay. All right. Thank you. 
Back to you, Mr. Hip. Any other questions or witnesses? Tasa, if we got, if we have them. Yes, this is Heidi Airy. I'm his Casa. Hi. Um, how's this child doing? Um, not great. He's uh, very, very impulsive and is very much um, trying to buck authority. Um, anytime we get something in line that will help him out, he does everything he can to self-sabotage. Really? Do you know why? Well, I mean, there's a variety of reasons. There's some biological, there's some uh, background trauma-induced, uh, lots of changes in placements as he pushes against that. I think we counted 34 recorded placements in the last 10 years. Is he under any kind of uh, psychiatric or psychological care? He is, but the problem is he moves so much that every time we get something established, there's no um, rapport, there's no consistency to his treatments. Do you have any recommendations? We've been throwing that around for quite a while. We've been working on this a lot for the last few months, well, the last few years, really. Um, we would love for him to stay in extended care. But again, just like Cassie said, every time, you know, he goes from one day, yes, he's going to do it. The next day, nobody's going to tell him what to do. And if he's an independent living, somebody's going to check on him. And in the same conversation, he can tell me, I'm not telling you and Miss Cassie anything about me, so you can't check on me. And then five minutes later, he's saying, well, you are going to call call me tomorrow, right? You know, so it's like, he's just confused. He's um, scared about turning 18. He knows that there's no place for him to go. There's no support system. There's no family. Um, it's really a sad situation. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Pastor Witness. All right, thank you, Ms. Moore. Ms. Heidi, um, is there anything else you think that the department or myself or you are able to do to help TJ at this point? I don't know what, what we can do. We're all willing to do it. Um, it's really, it's back in the balls in his court. And every time, you know, we'll think we're making progress. We think that we've got a handle on it. And then... He does things like run off and get in trouble again. And then we calm him down and get him lined out again. And then it, it's just a cycle. I, I don't know how to break it. I don't know what to do. I will say there's been a lot of people that have put a lot of effort into working with him and helping him. And he just is, he seems incapable of accepting the help for what it is and moving forward. Is there anything else that you want to inform the court on that you haven't had an opportunity to? I don't think so. Pass witness. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Airy. Uh, back to you, Mr. Hip. Nothing further. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Moore? Um, Judge, my client wanted to testify today, but now that we've started and I'm looking at the screen, I don't see him anymore. He's been here. He, he's not going to be here. He um, is currently on AWOL, on a stolen bike from placement. Okay. Well, I can communicate to you that um, he wanted to testify. He wanted to do so publicly. Um, he wanted to apologize to you, Judge, for his behavior the last time that he was in court and for cursing and acting up. Um, and he wanted to tell you that he is doing his best to turn things around. He does want to stay in care. Um, he does want to do online school. He does want to be able to get a job. And he would like for CPS to give him information relating to his sisters so that he can contact them. Okay. All right. Ms. Moore, thank you um, for that. Um, And uh, you can let him know that I accept uh, his apology and I thank him for it. Um, 
I, I still would have loved to have seen him, talk to him today. Um, I, I guess uh, in all of this, I'm trying to keep my eyes on the silver linings uh, that seem to me to be A, y'all, and, and B, uh, the fact that he did uh, sign up for extended care. Um, so um, I think if he just um, stays with the program and uh, learns from each of these hard knocks and follows y'all's advice to him that uh, we can we can get through this. Um, we will, gosh, she is almost 18, wow. Well, I will set this for a services review uh, and thank you all for your uh, continued hard, hard work uh, on his behalf until, until he gets it. Um, but our next uh, hearing will be again for a services review, uh, October the 28th, October the 28th at 9 a.m. And hopefully he can uh, make it to that hearing even uh, virtually. So, all right. Uh, so until then, PMC has continued. Um, and uh, how much longer should he bring the bike back or come back? How much longer is he able to be at the shelter? Um, they know he's 18 and 12 days. Um, this is a shelter that discharged him in February. So they mm -hmm. let him come back knowing it was going to be a short stay. Um, so they're really trying to work with him. Um, he said he was going to go take the bike to a friend's house and come right back. Um, but I have not been updated on his return yet. Okay. And Ms. Moore, do you know where these uh, would be placements are, family or otherwise, where he might land? Well, I know of one family member, but I don't know that he's going to be permitted to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now his friends, they're all over. Right. Right. And okay. he has expressed, I think, even to this court, um, a desire to at some point live with friends at an apartment or something. So I, yeah, I can't speak to any of that. Yeah. But he's in Montgomery County now. Well, he should be. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much. And uh, if we need to get back in here sooner than our next hearing, um, then I know you all uh, know what to do and we'll do that. So, but your excuse for now, thank you. DC on the Moore case, I believe. A services uh, review. So, uh, Ms. Franklin uh, and Ms. Croft, it looks like y'all are up. So, uh, if you'll raise your right hands to be sworn, please, good. you all swear. Ms. Croft, you know who we saw earlier this morning, right? Sorry, we've seen a lot of people earlier this morning. <laughs> we, we did. <laughs> but uh, your, your lesser half. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. Hip, you, you may call your first. Okay. Is this going to be Ms. Franklin? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are the parents engaged in services? No, um, DC is actually um, in PMC. He's 18. Oh, it's on here as a services review. Okay. Well, where is he? He's living in a supervised independent living home. Good. And is he working? He's not working. He's still in school. And is he in college? No, he's still in high school. He just turned 18, um, March the 8th. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what's the long range goal for him? Depends on the day, but as of today, it's <laughs> definitely a uh, graduation and him eventually getting a job or possibly doing some type of summer school program that also leads to classes at college. But again, that's today. That's today. That's today. Okay. And uh, does he have any special needs? He is level uh, specialized care. Um, he does currently have some intellectual needs in school. 
So that does kind of hamper his opportunities. But between myself, um, Ms. Croft, and also his PALS worker, we're trying to find other alternative programs for him once he graduates from high school. Okay. Um, all right. I'll pass the witness. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Gott? No questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, back to you, Mr. Hip. And Casa? Yes, sir. Okay. How's he doing? I'd have to agree with uh, Giovanni straight on. Um, sometimes he's a handful. Uh, just any you day. You just got to take it with a grain of salt. Um, you still love him and you just keep on pushing for him and letting the, you know that you're letting him know that you're still in his corner. Um, difficult team. You may hear from him five times in one day. He may go a few days and you don't hear from him at all, but I can guarantee you that if he needs, he's going to pick up that phone and call. Yeah. All righty. Uh, anything you want to tell the court? Um, I'm glad that he decided to stay in extended care. Yeah. I'm very yeah. thankful that, that uh, Giovanni talked to him from start to finish about it and gave him all the ins and outs. And I, I'm very glad and grateful that, that she did that so that he would stay. Okay. Thank you. I'll pass for this. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gott. I, I don't have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, DC's not uh, with us, right? He's got. <laughs> That's correct. He's not here today. Okay, well, it's a Friday afternoon after all. <laughs> yes, he's with a out, he's on an outing now since school is out with the placement. And I told him all he had to do was just be on the phone, but he told me that me and Miss Monica could handle it. Yeah, well, I'm I could not uh, disagree with that. Uh, he, I'm sure he's on his phone wherever he is, but just oh, not on the phone, right? <laughs> absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, um, thank you all uh, very much, and so maybe you can. Uh, get him to uh, log on next time. Um, so glad uh, he is in extended care um, and uh, amenable to most of the services and uh, that he um, stays in uh, regular contact with you all as well. Um, that's no little uh, no little thing in terms of his his success and security and services. So, um, all right, our next services review will be October the 28th at 9 a.m. Uh, and if you all think of anything that uh, he needs from the court, uh, let us know in the meantime. So, all right, so thank you all very, very much. You are excused. Uh, and if this is your last case, then um, have a great weekend. Three, two, Department thank of you. Family and Protective Services versus Haley Latham and Thomas Chambers for a petition for order in aid of investigation uh, is uh, is the respondent uh, Haley Latham present? Haley Latham, Haley Latham, Haley Latham. What about um, Thomas Chambers? Thomas Chambers. Thomas Chambers. If uh, you all are on um, the telephone. Um, and I, I don't think you are. I only see one number and I recognize it. But if you are somehow, press star six, star six, unmute, announce your appearance. Otherwise, unmute your device. Uh, no one at all is presently in the waiting room. So um, Haley Latham, Thomas Chambers. All right. No answer. Let's see. If we just have... reset it to next Thursday, Wednesday. Five, eight. Eight. Five, eight. Sure. We can we can do that. Um Okay, so then we will reset hereby uh, the uh, petition for order in aid of investigation 24DCCB00532. We'll reset it for uh, May the 8th, May the 8th at 9 a.m. That docket will be in the Justice of the Peace uh, Court Number 1 off of Cos Street uh, in Liberty. Okay. Anything else from anyone else? I'm just curious. Is the road between Dayton and Liberty passable? 
Does anybody know? Ms. Ms. Williams, do you know that the road between Dayton and Liberty? Last I heard, Mr. Hip, it was passable. It is passable. That's what I heard about, about, about a couple hours ago. Now, I don't know about now. Well, I heard yesterday that it was uh, flooding into the restaurant that's on the banks of the river there. Oh. I've been watching updates throughout Fort. And there's still lots of flooding. The water's still coming up. 563 is flooded and closed. Uh, lots of uh, 59 is closed. Uh, some different spots on uh, 69 I-10 are closed. So uh, with all the release and the, the cresting that's coming, we may have issues on Monday in Chambers County. Just a heads up. <laughs> oh. Well, and I believe uh, the chat just went away, but I believe um that maybe there is some uh is some water but it might still be passable um so well last week it, it looked like to me the road uh, the water was only about five feet from the railroad trestle so uh, and that was last week so um i um was in uh, jasper a couple of days ago and uh, there where I cross uh, the Trinity right at the Livingston Dam. Boy, it was something. Never seen it like that, but it was passable. But then again, that, yeah, was, Livings that was 20 inches of rain uh, right. before, before 20 inches yeah. of rain. Yeah, Livingston is pretty much underwater. That's not too far from me. They're pretty much underwater right now. So uh, lots of things still closing, lots and lots of water uh, still being released and uh, more rain predicted through the weekend. So everybody be safe. Well, yeah, the same thing here with Lake Conroe and the San Jacinto River. So uh, look out, uh, Kingwood. Okay. Well, thank thank you all very much. Anything else? Thank okay. you all. Yeah, I got to go. Thank you. Please stay safe. Have a great weekend. We are adjourned. Thank you, Savannah. Bye.